Greetings, fellow children of the Blade. This is Blade Broadcast here. Um, I don't know if you saw my last video, uh, the first video that I did on the Kershaw Volt 2 knife. Um, if you did, I would just like to mention that uh, for some reason in the upload process, about five minutes got cut off the end, so there is some missing information, and I have not been able to figure out, or I did not figure out how to upload or get the rest of it uploaded to YouTube. So if you have any questions about the knife, um, you can email me at bladebroadcast at gmail .com or just ask me in the comments, um, and I will be more than happy to answer. Uh, the subject of this review is not the Kershaw Volt 2. It is a knife by this company, which I am sure you are aware of. More specifically, the Benchmade Mini Axis Striker Knife. Um, I have the... Uh, my Benchmade Mini Axis Striker is the um, drop point black coated plain edge version and then also loaned to me for the review I have the black coated drop point combo edge version so what I'm going to do is just go over the overall specifications of the knife um, the specs that I think are most important and then I will go into the specifics of the knife so first off the overall length of the knife um, this would apply to both knives I believe is 6.81 inches the blade length is 2.94 inches the blade thickness is 0.1 inches um, the blade is made out of 154 cm steel uh, and on both of these I have the drop point blade there is a tanto available um, for both of these knives as well I believe um, uh, the blade grind is flat. Um, the as I said, there's um, I have the black coated version of both of these knives. I'm not sure what the coating is that makes uh, that they use for the black coating. Maybe if I find it later, I'll throw it in the description or the comments. Um, uh, what is the black? This is these are the black coated versions. Um, the handle thickness is 0.4 inches. Uh, the handle scales are made out of G10. Um, there are skeletonized stainless steel liners in the knife, and in both of these knives, and the knives weigh 2.84 ounces. So now, um, I will go into the specifics of the knife, but just before I do, I would like to state that this is, for me, an almost nearly perfect EDC knife, um, except for one sort of minor, uh, hit I will give the knife, and one much more major um, hit that I will mention on these knives. So first off, I'll start with the blade. The length, as I said, is 2.94 inches. Um, they are both drop point blades, which I generally prefer for EDC tasks, which is what I mainly think this uh, knife will be used for. I don't really think it's a very good self-defense knife. It's just, I think, too small. Um, uh, and sometimes they'll go clip point for EDC, but generally I just prefer drop point. I found that I can do things like open packages, but also stuff like slicing apples well with a drop point. Uh, like I said, these I do have the black finished versions. They are both available in um, satin finish, though. Um, the grind on both of these knives is flat. Is a flat grind. It starts about I'd say a quarter of the third to the way um, down the spine. Um, uh, it's not a full flat grind. Um, the serrations on this model, I have to say I do not like. I don't think the points are pronounced enough to really give you a good start into, um, or make you make good headway into a material like cardboard or uh, cord when you're cutting it. And I think I'll do a whole separate video on my views on serrations. Um, just to get that out there, what I think good serrations look like and what I think they're really for. Uh, the steel, uh, as mentioned before, is 154cm, um, which is a higher-end stainless steel, so that's a uh, plus for this knife that it sends such a high-end steel. Uh, there is jimping on both of these knives, which is does give traction. Um, there is some recessed jimping on the liners and the handle. I'd like to see that pulled out more so we have more jimping but that said you can get traction with this jimping it is uh, not as good in my opinion as the jimping on this Spyderco Manix 2 for example 
uh, which is the best jimping on any knife, folding or fixed blade that I've ever handled, and that is to include other Spyderco knives that I've handled. Um, I will do a review on this knife too. It is the newer version of the Manix 2, I believe it's newer, uh, with black G10 handle scales and an S30V blade. Um, so I'll, you'll see a review on that coming up. Um, so I do. Th I think this is a very good EDC blade shape, and that is one of the things I liked about the knife. Um, when I was looking at it, I do like this blade shape for EDC. Um, now I get into the lock type and lock up, and this is the major hit I am going to give this knife. On my knife, there is noticeable side-to-side -side blade play. I did tighten it and got rid of most of it, but there's some still there, and it did slow down the deployment. Uh, and on this knife, which has not been tightened to the degree, to the degree that mine has, there is even more noticeable side-to-side -side blade play. Uh, there's nothing up and down that I can detect on either knife. Um, actually, I take that back, there is just a tad bit of up and down in this serrated model. Um, in mine, I do not detect anything up and down. Um, so that is a major hit I have to give the knife. And just to show that an axis lock can have uh, um, essentially no blade play, uh, I have loaned to me this Benchmade Mini Griptilian in which there is essentially no side-to-side -side blade play. Um, or up and down, so, and this has not been tightened nearly to the degree, nearly to the degree that mine has. Uh, it is an ambidextrous lock, which for, if you're a, a lefty, that is a plus, and that is kind of another must for me for an EDC knife, uh, that I can really, even though I'm right-handed, I like to be able to get at the lock from either side, and it's very easy to actuate, it's very smooth. Um... And I have to say the axis lock is probably my overall favorite folding knife locking mechanism. Uh, so, But I do think despite the blade play, it will be a strong lock up. As you can see, the stop pin is very thick too, which I like on a folding knife. Um, and I think it will be a durable lock too. So now I'm going to talk about the deployment. Um, it is dual thumb studs on both knives. Uh, once again, that's good if you are a lefty. Um, they are removable via Torx screws so if you're using a sharpening uh, a knife sharpener that requires exposed flats on the blade you'll get some there but if you remove the thumb studs you'll have um, even more exposed here and I don't know maybe you just don't like thumb studs so you can take those off if you want to um, so the deployment is ambidextrous too uh, it is very quite fast and smooth on both of these knives granted on mine which I've tightened down more it is a little bit more difficult, but I could still do it with just, uh, I'm sorry, I hit the table there. I can still do it with just thumb tension alone. Um, but this knife, which is um, not been tightened as much as mine, it's even easier. So it is a very fast and smooth deployment. I don't know if you can see on camera here, but there are what appear to be phosphorus bronze washers in the knife that um, speeds up the deployment. Uh, those phosphorus bronze washers have low friction properties. Um, blade retention on these knives I think could be a little bit better. It's decent, but uh, as you can see and probably better here and look there, the knife, you can uh, shake it out a little bit and it will pop out of the handle. Um, but that said, I don't think it's so bad that the knife will come open in your pocket. Let me show you on this version. Um, so, and on this one, which hasn't been tightened as much, it will come out even a little bit more, but it's not that big a deal. So, um, there I am screwing up the deployment. Uh, but, uh, they are fast deploying. Uh, the blade centering on mine is pretty much perfect, and it was even before I tightened it down when it was looser from the factory. Oh, and I forgot to talk about the factory edge of my knife. I can't speak to the factory edge on this one, but on mine it was pretty much perfect. It was just sailing through paper and... Yeah, I haven't had to resharpen it, although I haven't used it really hard at all. Just some basic EDC tasks, uh, like um, cutting tape and stuff like that. So, But the blade centering on this one uh, is a little bit off to the left. It's not rubbing the liner or anything. I don't know if this is just a bad one, mine is just a good one, or if it just varies model to model. I don't know. Um, that's how it is. Uh, now to the handle. 
It is G10 on both knives, and I have, and this is kind of another must for me for an ADC knife. It has to have a high traction handle material, and I prefer G10 out of all the handle materials I know of and have handled t to date. And I have to say, this is probably the best G10 I've ever felt on a, either a folding or fixed blade knife, and that is to include the famously high traction G10 on cold steel knives like this AK-47 model. Um, I can get even more traction on my knife here than I can with this, and this is very high traction G10. Um, uh, so, once again, and with that jimping that I uh, talked about earlier, you can get a very good grip on this knife. This is one of the things I like about this knife. The handle's a little bit short for reverse grip, but you could do it. Um, but your thumb kind of wraps all the way over like that. Um, and I haven't had actually any under the clip issues with this uh, G10, uh, and I definitely have with this one. This knife shreds my pocket like crazy, so that's a plus. Um, uh, the construction of the handle, it is um, pillar constructed. You can see pillar there, pillar there, and the access lock there, and the stop pin that I talked about there. It is all, uh, you can take it all out with torque screws as you can everything on this knife the pillars, the clip, the stop pin um, the pivot screw, the thumb studs, everything is Torx um, and there is a lanyard hole I think it could be a little bit bigger um, but that said as you can see here hollowed out 550 cord will get through it uh, it would just be easier if it was a little bit bigger uh, and this is hollowed out 550 cord. I don't think, I think you'd have a very hard time getting um, non hollowed out 550 cord through it. Um, so, and there are liners, stainless steel liners in this knife, skeletonized, which is another big plus for me. I really like to have skeletonized stainless steel liners in my knife, in my um, EDC folders, uh, just because I like the added strength and it doesn't add too much weight for me. Um, now let's talk about the clip of this knife. Uh, I love the clip on this knife. It carries um, pretty darn deep, as you can still have about that much sticking out of your pocket from my thumb uh, in this direction there. You'll have about that much sticking out of your pocket. Uh, so it carries certainly deep enough for me. Um, it is a black clip, so it won't draw too much attention, like maybe the clip, the polished clip on this Spider Comanix 2, once again. Um, it is a pretty, I think it's a decently strong clip. I did notice on mine that it's kind of floating above the handle a little bit. I uh, hear if I tap it, or if I um, just touch the clip there, you can hear it tapping against the liner or the handle scale. Uh, that is not occurring in this model. Um, and mine, it, my clip is a little bit looser retaining than this one. Um, that said, I haven't had any issues with it coming out of my pocket at all. I don't know if that's why I haven't had under the pocket issues or under the clip issues with it in pocket I'm gonna try and tighten it down and see if that um, makes it a little bit stronger uh, and I don't know if I'll have under the clip issues then uh, I'll have to see um, I'd like it if this clip is maybe a little bit smaller like maybe going to about halfway to this dip down area right here so maybe a centimeter or so off um, off of the clip but that's a very small um, uh, thing I'm criticizing there. I still love the clip on this knife. Uh, and I think it'll be adequately, or I think it will be strong enough. So, um, that is my review of the Benchmade Mini Axis Striker Knife. Uh, almost perfect EDC for me, uh, notwithstanding the lockup and the slightly rounded jimping. Um, uh, this is Blade Broadcast, and as the, uh, title of the channel suggests I really want this channel to be almost like a TV show for knives for people who like like who like myself uh, love knives um, so the next knife I plan to review is this uh, spider co Manix 2 so um, if you like this stay tuned put any suggestions or requests for review you have in the comments or email me at bladebroadcast at gmail.com uh, that's the blade broadcast review see you later